So last year I did an interview with Robert. Robert's a physician and a real athlete. He's a, he's a marathon runner and he was taking a medication called Repatha, which if you're familiar with it, drastically lowers your cholesterol levels. Robert suffered some really bad side effects and we did a video on it, which a lot of people uh, had commented on. So I wanted to do this follow-up video because people were con basically commenting, how's he doing today? What's he eating? How's his cholesterol levels? Is he having any side effects? How long did it take for the pain associated with Repatha to go away? And so Robert basically was nice enough to say, let's do this video and see what uh, we can figure out and answer people's questions. So Robert, how are you doing today? Well, first of all, Joe, I want to I want to tell you thank you so much for having me back. And um, uh, a lot has changed in I guess the last year and a half, uh, or a little over a year that we did this initial video. Um, when I contacted you way back, I was really concerned. I had I think four four or five shots. I'm not even sure at that point, but um, uh, immediately after the second shot, I started getting some really bad elbow pain. Um, where they were giving me the injections and I just was really uncomfortable and, and I, I just didn't feel right. And I was very, very concerned. I said, what am I doing here? You know, I, uh, sadly, I, I, uh, I found out through COVID as, as some of the people, if they go back and see the original video that um, I had uh, some bleeding from the COVID coming out of my lungs. And it turns out when they did a CAT scan, even though my lungs are perfectly fine, we saw coronary plaque and then I did a stress test and found out that I had a, a blockage and um, here I am three stents later, but two years later from my stents, um, happy to say uh, on a number of levels, uh, I'm doing really, really well. The stents are not an issue. Um, my, my, my heart feels great. The reason being uh, that I'm doing the right stuff. I mean, I exercise every single day. I'm in the process of uh, training for the Boston Marathon come April, which I've done. This is going to be my 10th Boston, my first one back in 1983. So it's a long time ago. The only reason why I think I'm doing it is because it's 40 year anniversary. I ran two hours and 35 minutes back then. So that's pretty quick. That's about 550 five a mile people, but not one mile, but 26 strung together. Um, so I was, I was pretty talented back in the day. Anyway, how am I doing, Joe? Uh, I think as far as the Rapatha, it is a long gone memory. And I remember you talking to me, telling me you're going to get over this. And you had a, 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 another client who was complaining of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen who are watching, if you go off the medication and you are feeling symptoms like me, muscle aches and pain and just didn't feel right. Um, it does go away. Okay. I have not taken an injection and in, Oh God, whatever it is, it's, it's over a year now. Uh, and I have no intentions of ever taking any of this, those injections ever again, or any of these, um, type of, uh, lipid injections, because I'll tell you something, uh, my cholesterol with uh, low medication, and what am I doing? What do I mean by low medication? Well, I take Crestor or Ruvastatin, which is a, everybody knows about that pill, but here's the difference with, with that. I really, really fought to take it. Mm -hmm. And my cholesterol without it, I believe my last numbers that were taken before taking uh, Crestor was like 189, which is below normal. Okay, which right in the normal range, my uh, triglycerides I think were 80, and uh, which is very good. This is on no medication, and um, I think my my LDLs are like in um, like 105, 110, just above optimal, but not for a stent patient. Mm. And uh, my cardiologist says, listen. You want to be back in here? You want to have more stents? I go, no. He goes, you are a genetic former. And I saw some people uh, on one. I looked up the uh, old video and some people say, how could he have an 800 uh, 
calcium score, and he eats well. My cholesterol is probably better than most people that are walking the streets. I'm 140 pounds. I'm 5'9", 5'10". I'm a stick, and I have always eaten well, okay? Um, so it's not what you eat. It's what the body is able to clear on the cholesterol level. My body is not what they want optimal. It's good, mm -hmm. but because I'm a stent person that has three stents and is LAD Widowmaker, they want me well under 100. Um, so Ruvastatin or Crestor, I'm taking, taking it now. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to tell people what to take, but I'm on a very, very low dose, having no side effects from the Crestor. Um, I saw a couple other things on there, you know, as far as, uh, you know, his, his doctor must have been out of his mind to offer that. Well, no, he wasn't because I fought taking anything. And he gave me these uh, back at the time, a little over a year ago. He says, if you're not going to take a pill, then I'll give you the injection. And I said, mm, I don't know about injections, but he goes, oh, it's great. You only have to take it every two weeks. And, and uh, you know, it, it, in that respect, you won't have to think about taking a pill. And you, you get the shot, you're done. Well, you know what? I gave in. It's overkill. And I always say it's kind of, I think I said in the last video, it's kind of like a... Uh, trying to kill a fly with a cannon. Yeah, it was overkill. The person who made that comment, I never should have took that drug because my, my, my levels were not bad. Right. But I was so resistant to the uh, oral medication, which I'm not anymore. And I'll tell you, only because I'm not having any side effects. Crestor is the gold standard, they say, for oral medications, Lipitor or uh, Crestor. Um, I'm, I'm really cautious. I'm following what the doctors are telling me because I really don't want to wind up in there again. Um, and so far, so good at this point. You know, I'll leave it up to you, Joe. I mean, you know, I, I would say right now from when we talked, I'm doing great. I don't have any pains, no muscle issues. Uh, like I said, I don't even think of Repatha anymore. But for the people that have been taking it, I think well, this is more of an awareness to the um, to the population who were put on this, mm -hmm. and someone uh, who you know got off it relatively quick. Light is better if you find any side effects or something that doesn't seem right. Tell your cardiologist because there are options out there, mm -hmm. and um, this is one that uh, um, I have since uh, discontinued, obviously. And I'm, and I'm now going to stay with the crest all because only because my numbers have gotten much better. Uh, my LDLs are under 100 uh, with a very low dose. And my cholesterol is doing really, really well. I think I'm in the 140s. I've dropped on that. My HDLs are close to 70. So, but that's from athletics and that's from running anyway. So I expect that to be good. And my ratio is really, really, really good. So uh, life has really improved. Repather is gone in my mindset. And uh, I'm so glad I met you and that we did this video because I think it's really uh, something that people need to, people need to hear. And anything you want to add, Joe, you let me ask me questions. I mean, yeah, well, I, you know, and I got to thank the person well, you know, who actually I knew who took Repath and I saw what he was going through and that prompted me to write an article about it on my website. And then, you know, other people had, you know, reached out to me eventually and said, hey, this is the same thing happening to me as well. And then we ran into each other and, you know, you were nice enough to do a video. Um I'm curious for those who may not have seen the original video, which I will link to if they want to see. Um, how many shots of Repatha were you have you did you take, and when did the uh, muscle pains first begin? Well, I believe uh, I think it was either four or five. It's been so long, and initially, I think it was within the first one I took. Didn't really feel anything, uh, and then. You know, by the second one, two weeks later, and I said, you know, my elbow's really bothering me. He was giving it to me in, the, in my deltoid, on my right deltoid. I'm a natural lefty, so I said, I'll take it in the right arm. 
I did not want to go into the thigh or the stomach. I said, do it in Delta if you can do it there. And it's interesting because right by the second shot within a month, I was having incredible elbow pain, like, like tennis elbow to the point that, I mean, I couldn't even straighten out my elbow. It was so bad. So I really believe that it leaked into the elbow joint. Um, and I had to go to, I should go to an orthopedist and he, and he had to give me a cortisone shot. He said, listen, you're doing, you know, anything unusual here? He goes, well, I do work out three, four times a week in the gym for my running, uh, to stay fit. So I do some work with my arms, but not to the point that I've never had an issue. And it, it's interesting because, um, right to this day, over a year, I still got a mark where they gave the injection. It left some kind of scarring in, in my, in my, up in my deltoid muscle. I could see exactly where it was. So the, the pain started probably about after the second shot within a month. And it was agony. Now, as far as other muscle aches, I was getting some hamstring issues, no hip, nothing like that. But, you know, as a runner, I am so in tune to my body aches and it just felt weird. I can't explain it, but what these drugs do in my feeling, I'm just going to speak off of feeling, it kind of makes you feel like, like you, you drain, you, you don't have like the right, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I was actually able to feel a difference like I was um, depleted. That's the best word I could describe. I, I, I knew my body was not right. And, and I'm not sure, but I believe the body needs some type of cholesterol. Now, he got me down to, I think, 55 with two injections, which is super low. He's like saying, wow, you're doing amazing. Oh, yeah, but I feel like crap. So um, I felt like when I would do, I'll give you the analogy, and, and you understand this as an exercise physiologist. When I would train for a marathon back in the 80s, um, which I don't do anymore, the type of depletion, I would eat protein for about uh, three or four days before I carb load and start eating carbs. And when you're training on protein, your body loses all its carbohydrates and you feel so depleted that's kind of how i felt my muscles were like they would just have like nothing to them anymore i felt like i was eating away in my workouts it was a similar sensation um so right away i knew within a month i knew something was really off with the elbow and then um my hamstrings i was having issues with my hamstring i blew it out and I attribute blowing out my hamstring to Rapatha because it happened at exactly the time I started taking it. Uh, I went, and I never had any hamstrings issues in my life. So, yeah, I mean, um, that, that, that was something I picked up right away. Wow. And then you, previously, did you mention you had a friend who was a runner who also suffered? Uh, yes. Injury? Yes. My friend, Mike, my, oh, I'll use him first. Time. It doesn't matter. Mike, phenomenal distance run. He's a few years younger than me. I'm Closing in on 62 in a couple of weeks and still doing my thing. Um, been active my whole life. Always been fit. Always been very fast metabolism. And, and, and you know, from played everything. Played soccer, baseball, ice hockey uh, as in my youth. Even played adult ice hockey for many, many years. Um, but, yeah, he – now, it's interesting. He, he, he had um, a very high count of cholesterol and was on – uh, Crestor for years and years, and he was complaining, but high doses of Crestor and a phenomenal run, and a very, very thin man, very thin. He must have been about 130 pounds, but he was a little smaller, maybe about five, six, 130 pounds. I mean, the, the, the man was like a stick as well, built like an built like a pure Kenyan distance runner, thin, and, and, and just looked apart. And he was getting muscle aches continuously blowing out calves and he said to his doctor I, I i i can't take this stuff anymore but he had to take something so he left it and his doctor put him on rapatha he was telling me he was as well was getting muscle aches um i have not followed up with him recently and i really should give him a call but he complained he was telling me the same thing as you know i'm getting the same thing it, it doesn't feel right 
but I'm used to these kind of blowout of injuries from taking these drugs. So yeah, he as well um, was having issues. And, and Joe, I don't, I, I don't know if we're different than the average people out there taking Rapatha because we're so active and we're always pushing our bodies to the limit right. that um, I don't know if we're burning, you know, you know, going down to, uh, you know, burning through our, our uh, getting down to using our fats, fats faster, going mm-hmm. to a carbohydrate levels much quicker. Um, I don't know, really, I'd like to get a study on athletes taking yeah. Rapatha because yeah. I don't really don't know if there's, you know, been any studies along those lines. Maybe that's something yeah. you could introduce or ask people, any athletes taking Crestor, taking statins, real high level athletes, not yeah. just, yeah, I want to get to the high level people to see um, what they're going through. It's an interesting question. I, I don't recall seeing any athlete Rapatha studies out there. So absolutely, if there are any real athletes uh, watching us on YouTube or listening to us on the podcast, definitely reach out, let know, let us know what happened. Um, I, I don't know. And as you know, most clinical studies are not involving athletes anyway. So my, my guess is uh, uh, the makers of Rapatha probably didn't recruit a lot of athletes specifically. So I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, you wonder, if you push your bodies to the extreme, is there, could there be some, some interaction Action between the drug and extreme a- exercise? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't, couldn't say at this point. I don't think anybody could. So it's definitely something that's well, worth future research. I think by being, you know, listen, every time I go out and I run, I'm putting my, my, my body through an intense work. Okay. So I remember when I had my initial stress test, uh, the, my cardiologist said, well, you know, after they saw coronary plaque on, on the cat skin, he goes, have you ever had a stress test? I go, oh, maybe 20 years ago. Because, Doc, I run the Boston Marathon every year. I go to the track. I'm, I'm doing intervals. That, like, whatever you can do to me, I do stress tests every time I go out and they do a workout. I mean, a hard workout. And any time I run a 5K race, that's a hell of a lot harder on my heart than what you're going to do for me on a treadmill. I mean, that's easy. Okay. And he said, yeah, but we, we're going to do it differently. We're going to look at your arteries. We're going to inject uh, a dye in there. So we're going to see what's going on versus going out. The actual treadmill is only part of it. And he was correct. I mean, um, uh, I, I found I went into ischemia when I was getting up in the high levels. Um, I don't want to go into the, whether I needed the actual um, stents or not. I'm, I'm assuming I did. I, I, they saw it 70% block. But Joe, as I said last time, ironically, 70% is white, right where they'll start doing stents. And I had no symptoms. That was the crazy thing. Um, you know, so it is what it is. Uh, I do want to follow up. I was getting, since my, um, after I had my uh, uh, stents and, angi- and angioplasty, uh, I, was feeling weird for a while. And I decided to get another angiogram and the doctor said, why? Because you, you know, you look great. I mean, we didn't, they did a, a echo, echo stress test on me and they said, it, you're perfect. You ran 15 minutes on a treadmill high level and we maxed you out. I go, I don't care. I don't feel right. I, I, did I get restenosis? And restenosis for anybody who's listening with people who have stents within the first six months to a year, sometimes uh, the the stent closes down and you get the same type of a problem that uh, symptoms that people had. I had no symptoms prior to my stents. So I, they went in there this time, by the way, so anybody with a whole other discussion, but Joe, it kind of goes along what we're talking about. If there are people there that have had stents, um, they did the first one through my groin, which is horrible. That was just not comfortable because I couldn't do anything for like a four or five days. I saw black and blue. The next one was done in my arm. I requested that. They went right through the radial artery. And the next day I was out running and it was like nothing. And when they went in there, they said to me, your stents are so well done that your artery is not restenosed. It looks phenomenal. It's wide open. Whatever you're feeling could be in your head. I don't know, but you got nothing to worry about. And they checked the blood flow. They said, it's perfect. So they, I have no restrictions. I am, they say, but if you do feel something, let us know. Um, you know, we, then, then we'll, we got to check you out. 
it's like go about your business. You're, you're a model patient and um, uh, just do what you're supposed to do. But they keep on telling me you must take a cholesterol lower medication. And Joe, I want to elaborate a little on that because I was being a physician. I should have been more informed. But being that I never really thought about cholesterol as an issue in my life, it's not that they're afraid the stents are going to go bad because they're not. They're beautiful. In fact, they're so well covered now in the in the uh, LAD artery, uh, Widowmaker artery, that um, only a cardiologist could tell that I had stents. You can't even see them on, on, on the pictures. He said, your, your artery is better now than it was when I saw it a year ago when I, when I was taking it. It looks so good. So, But here's what they're afraid of. They're afraid that because I have a, a history of not clearing my cholesterol like normal people that are not like me can, um, another area could develop enough plaque that I'll need a stent in that artery again or another artery. Now, that is what I was not sure of. So the artery is clear and the stents have opened up beautifully in the locations that they was the blockage. The rest of the artery, I think they said about 30% blocked. Now 30% sounds like, oh my God, 30%. That's a real low number. I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but it's enough that plenty of blood's getting through. Um, and the rest of my arteries do look good. There's no issues. The Widowmaker is the one that's most common. The left descending, uh, you know, artery in, in the in the heart it controls the left side, and it's, it's the most important artery. Um, they're all important, but uh, yeah, I, I, that's why I must be on something. But I am really monitoring my food. Oh, let's talk about that for a second, and because I, I saw something on that. How do I eat? Well, I'll tell you how I ate in the past and how I eat now. Number one. I have never in my competitive days been a red meat eater. No hamburgers, no steak, none of that stuff. I just, that's something you just stay away from because it weighs you down. It adds weight. I just don't feel comfortable eating red meat. The only red meat I ate in the past, and it is red meat, is bacon. And I would have that with eggs once or twice a week at most. But, you know, that was really about the only red meat. Uh, as far as fried foods, I would have chicken cutlets, you know, along those lines. My wife would make me chicken cutlets and fr fried. I would, you know, eat some fried foods. I was never one of these fast food eaters. I wouldn't go to any of these fast food places. Um, French fries, okay, that's something that's fried. I'd eat that. Chinese food. Once in a while, we'd eat Chinese food in the house, okay? Worst thing, having an egg roll. Pizza, enough to the point that I would eat it, you know, let's say once a week. All right. Now, how am I now? Well, I'm and potato chips, by the way, at night time. Okay. How am I now? Have not had a slice of pizza in over two years. You say, I have a slice of pizza? It's not because I can't, I just don't care about it. If you ever take a slice of pizza and you dab it down with a, with a napkin, you will be really surprised how much grease is going to come on that napkin. No fried food, okay? Uh, no potato chips in two years. No bacon in two years. Um, basically, typical meal for me in the morning, wake up, have a slice of bread with maybe peanut butter or some oatmeal um, instead of, you know, just and maybe a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm a big believer in um oh what's what's the word i'm trying to come up with joe uh fasting and i'm not talking all day fasting i i i'll i'll, I'll eat something in the morning and then i'll go out and do my run just after I, you know just have something very light and usually in the afternoon don't eat much maybe i'll have a protein drink you know uh, i feel that 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 that's enough i'm getting protein so lunch is something I, I don't eat much of, very rarely uh, do I have lunch. Dinner's a regular meal, okay? Uh, what's a regular meal for me now? Well, salmon, big salmon eater. I'll eat uh, a lot of chicken. Don't eat the skin. 
I'm boring. <laughs> Gotta be honest too. It's a boring life, okay? Regular vegetables, you know, but I stay away from fried. And then you say, well, it doesn't sound like you're eating, eating much. It's not so much what I'm eating, okay? Because my body just doesn't clear it. So they say, really, it's not what I'm eating so much. It's what my body clears. But you know what? Um, it, I just feel better not eating that way. So it's a personal thing. Um, that, you know, along those lines. And it's, my, my weight has always been good, but when you stay away from those kind of foods, and also another thing, I don't eat late at night. Uh, I, I find after eight, nine o'clock at night, I, sh I really try to stay, stay away from food. Number one, because, you know, that's where you, you add weight and you put on calories on, you know, wasted calories. Um, so, it, you know, that, that's something it's been just become a personal, uh, thing that, I, that, that I've done. And because I'm an athlete, athletes are always cautious of what they want to put into their body yeah. and, um, big vitamin taker. Oh, and, oh, um, I do want to add one thing as I'm thinking about my normal uh, eating habits. Someone mentioned, uh, coenzyme Q10. Okay. Uh, I do take that because of the statin, but I will say this. I don't know if it does anything. I don't really know if, it, if it's helpful or not. There's a lot of uh, people that are taking it. I would like to know if that really does help statin use. And, you know, I, I'm with you, Joe. I, I, it's very, but it, I, it can't hurt you. It can't so, hurt you. It's, it's a fine nutrient. The research on CoQ10 and statins is, again, I'm, I'm waving my hand back and forth for those who can't see us, uh, is iffy at best. I've seen some interesting research on vitamin D reducing muscle pains with statins. Yes, I did see you, I did see you mention that. Um, but um, if you're not having any problems, we'll worry about it. And yeah, and, and I wouldn't say you're boring because I'm sitting here uh, as we're talking and I got I got a thermos, I got a big thermos. This is filled with a big smoothie uh, fill. I even put lima beans in my smoothies and, and broccoli. And I got some protein powder because if it tastes like chocolate, I can drink it. And then over here in this other thermos here, I have green tea. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I, I do drink a lot of green tea. I do. And that's just something I've acquired a taste. Um, you know, and, and when that one individual mentioned uh, that I saw online about, oh, he's got an 800, you know, uh, calcium score. Well, I want to just go on to that. I have a friend of mine, in, a, a colleague of mine, a, another physician who is an athletic guy. His numbers were similar to mine. Uh, never had any chest pain, nothing. But they were concerned about those numbers. They went in and did an angiogram and they did nothing. They said, you know, whatever those calcium numbers are, you got good arteries. So I don't know what, you know, it, it's just a test that is needed to do before they maybe want to possibly do an angiogram, um, you know, prior. I, I went step by step by step. And my body, it's really important. I'm answering that other gentleman and people who are listening. The number meant nothing other than there was an issue. That's what it showed. Um, and yeah, there was a 70% blockage. Uh, again, sadly, right at the number that they will do a stent. And, you know, we'll never know if it was 60% because that's not really done with a machine, Joe. That is actually done by the doctor. He does these, these cardiologists, interventional cardiologists. They do thousands and thousands of these procedures and they're eyeing it. They're putting in the gauge and they say, well, it looks like it's about 70%, 80%, you know, and only because I know symptoms, that's where it becomes a question mark. Usually people go in and get angiograms. Oh my God, I don't feel right, doc. I, I can't breathe. I'm, I'm showing us a breath. I've got chest pain, you know, and that's when they go in, they do an angiogram, they find 80, 90%, 100% blockages. And, you know, they catch these people right before they have a heart attack. Um, or they sometimes they actually have a heart attack and then they got to send these people. So, I was, I remember my cardiologist just saying to me, you're one of these freaks. You're thin, you run every day, you run marathons. And, and, and I'm not talking about just finishing a marathon, people. I mean, at 60, I ran a 322 Boston Marathon. That's seven minutes and 45 seconds a mile. 
okay, at that age. So um, some people in their 20s can't break four hours. And I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just showing the level of ability of, of, of training that, that my body goes through. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. You mentioned earlier that you're just not a good clearer of cholesterol. No. Um, and, and I'm sure someone's going to ask, uh, what, what is your HDL level? Because we, everybody knows HDL is the good cholesterol. It gets rid, it clears excess cholesterol. That's a great question, Joe, because HDL is really good. My HDL is, it runs anywhere between, I've seen it as low as 55, which is not low, and as high as 70. I'm probably in a 60 range there. When you do your blood work, they, they, they have a formula where they look at the HDL, the LDL and the cholesterol. And it, it comes up if you're anywhere in that three ratio, 3.0 or better, that 3.5 or better, actually, you're considered safe. I mean, I always fall in that. The problem is because I was I have stents. They want that LD. They don't care so much about the HDL. They could care less about that. They, for me, they want that LDL at 70. But if they say to me, if you get under 100 consistently, that's fine. Um, you know, and, and I think that's what the, you know, with, without medication, I was hovering 105, 110. Again, for some of that stents, normal, very normal. They won't even consider it a problem if it's all until it gets to like 125 or higher, 130 or higher. Um, but because they found the blockage, uh, you know, they they you know they they, they just want to make sure that I don't wind back in there with another uh, uh, you know another angiogram or or some more stents in the future. I think someone else on YouTube at one point asked about your lipoprotein A levels. Did you ever have your? Yes, I did. Prior to the, uh, the first angiogram, um, they did a test. They checked everything. And they saw, I think it was at six, number six, which is, which is way within normal limits. So my, you know, Joe, it, it's taking me down a, a little bit of a bad path now because I never, to this day, I'm not even sure I needed the stents. But I have to assume there was a blockage. There's no doubt there was a blockage. There's 100% there was a blockage. How much of a blockage was this done for preventive measures? I think in reality, it's too late. I can't go back. It is what it is. I do have a, I do form or retain cholesterol in my bloodstream. It's no doubt about that. It's not crazy. It never has been crazy. But over a lifetime of, you know, I guess of genetically being a cholesterol non-clear, I'll, I'll say, uh, genetics, people, genetics, right. me, genetics, because I am not your norm. There are people that are 100 pounds heavier than me and probably have better, have, have cholesterol that might be equivalent to mine or better than mine without medication. So sadly, it's in my family. My mom died of a heart attack. We, I think I talked about that last time. She made it to 80. She had a heart attack, thin woman, thin woman. Um, my uncle, um, I'm from my mom's side, he died uh, on the table from a quadruple bypass in his 50s, but he was a chain smoker he was in world war ii he was a fighter pilot he was a, a bomber in the in world war ii on a on a on you know in world war ii going into germany and dropping bombs and uh um but he was a chain smoker two three packs a day and you know it's all from from that and then he died you know he back in the day when he had that heart attack they were just starting out with bike trip quadruple bypass surgery so it's a, it's a very very long time ago it's in my family, sadly. Yeah. You had mentioned, and I forget the answer in our first uh, conversation, the half-life of repathing. It's one of the questions people ask me a lot is, how long until the muscle pain stops? 
And the half-life is, is the big thing to look at. How long does it take for half of the- Big drug? question, Joe. And this has to do with Crestor as well. And I'm not going to tell people how to fit Crestor. <laughs> I don't want to go down that road because I don't want to be made telling people what to do. Talk to your cardiologist if you're on it or if you're on any stat and what you should be doing, okay? I have my own, my own formula. But um, the half-life is critical on any drug. Rapatha stays in your body with one shot 50, I believe if I remember correctly, 50% is gone in two weeks. So you're supposed to take it every other week. So it's still 50% is still in there. So every cycle, it goes down 50%. One injection will stay in your body. And don't call me on this, people, but I try to do the math because it goes from 50 down to 25, then down to 12, then down to six and a half, then down to 3%. For it to be cleared completely, 100% out of your body, it's about three months. So you will still have some of that repath in your body. And ironically, it took a number of months to clear my body. It really, really did. Uh, um, and that's when the pains went away. Now, rubastatin, for that matter, is a very strong statin. And a lot of cardi cardiologists love it because it works so well. And um, that half-life is as well a long half-life. So I'll just tell people, do it, don't talk to your cardiologist, don't take it from me, but uh, rubastatin will stay, or, or Crestor, um, if you take a pill on Sunday, let's say, Monday, it's still very much in your body all day. Even on Tuesday, it's still doing its thing. So um, in fact, I'll just bring this up. When they told me to, when I started up, they said, take it once a week. They take it twice a week. See how you feel because it, you know, it, it, it's a very strong statin. And I will say for me, it's a water soluble statin. Not to get too much into that, Joe. Lipitor and Crestor are the two big ones that everybody seems to be on. There's a lot of others, but those are the two main ones. Lipitor. It's, it's a fat soluble. So it's, it's a little different. The body clears it a little different where Crestor leaves your body as far as it's, it's metabolized differently than, than Lipitor. Not to get into the, the, the physiology aspect of clearing of the drug. Um, but for me, Crestor is, is the one that I chose. They wanted me on it. And there's no wrong or right. It's like, so do you want to drive a BMW or do you want to drive a Mercedes? They're both high-end level automobiles and they're similar in, in that respect. It's just that, which do you like? Which does doctor like? And, you know, um, so that's really a personal, personal doctor decision as well as a uh, patient decision. Somebody had reached out to me who had taken Rapatha and said that uh, soon afterwards, she started getting really, really bad runny noses. When yes, that is one of the side effects. That runny nose, um, I feel like flu-like symptoms. You know, every go to, look, one thing I will say people about any drug you take, okay? <laughs> Don't go to the PDR. As a physician, I'm one of these people Oh, let me look. Let me look up the side effects on this. And when you, when you know, a little knowledge is not always so good. And, you know, trust me on that one. Okay, but yes, that is one of the side effects. It, it does sometimes create flu-like symptoms. Um, Run your nose is one of, one of the things. Um, you know what? It's one of those crazy drugs. But I will throw something else out along those lines. Um, that all of these statins, and even though. Repath is not a statin. It goes on another class of drugs, which, you know, again, it, that's why they don't call it a statin. It, goes through another, it clears it through a completely different pathway in the bloodstream versus in the liver. But um, these drugs potentially can cause diabetes. Mm -hmm. That's one of the fears. Raise your blood sugar. That's one of the fears being that my mom had diabetes, latent diabetes, not latent in life. And um, she was on a, a a diabetic medication that a lot of people that happens to my a1c i think someone's asked me about that uh is is, is where the normal limits uh i'm good okay i'm not really worried about diabetes only because my mom had it i don't eat a lot of sugar i'm not a big cake eater um i try to 
you know, listen, I'm, you got to live your life, but I don't eat ice cream and all of this stuff uh, on any major regular basis by any means. Mm -hmm. he, he, by, by exercising, I'm clearing a lot of the glucose out of my body anyway. But because of the way I eat, I don't eat a lot of carbs. Um, like people were saying, I saw one person, I said, oh, he's a runner, so he must eat a lot of carbohydrates. And, you know, that's a different type of a, that turns into sugar in your body, okay? And, there's, you know, there's simple carbohydrates and there's complex carbohydrates. That's for you to put maybe another lecture. Yes, yeah, eating a, sucking candy is one type of carb, one type of sugar. And eating a, 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 a piece of bread will turn into sugar eventually in your body. And that, that, that's a different carb, that, that's a different type of, that's a carbohydrate that becomes sugar. All, all carbohydrates ultimately become sugar, but there's different ways the body will, will, will metabolize it and look at it, okay? Um, I am not really a very big carbohydrate eater. Yeah, I'll eat my pasta before a marathon. Or if I'm going out to do a, a half, a long run, let's say if I'm going to run 15, 16 miles the night before as a training run, I'll have like, Maybe so I'll tell my wife, yeah, make me some pasta tonight because I'm gonna I, let me get a little extra carbs for them. But it's not like on a regular basis. I'm more of a protein eater, actually, Joe. Uh, I, I, I and that's part of because I want to stay away from the carbs. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. Somebody had reached out to me and said that when they took Repatha. And I've seen this myself in the person I personally knew who took it. Um, the muscles would just start jerking. I mean, out of control, just like, you know, I think the term was myoclonus, uh, or just uh, involuntary muscle twitches. Did you experience anything like that? No, I, I just felt initially with the arm was the first sign I was getting this unbelievable. I mean, to the point, ladies and gentlemen, I could not straighten out my arm. My arm was like locked, it was frozen. I mean, literally, like I couldn't, I couldn't extend my arm. And, and it was where the, the injection was given, right? In the delta, just, just above the, um, the, the elbow. And I know it leaked right into the joint. Yeah. And it, it had to be doing something in there. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, now I'm getting two week doses of high medication in, into, a, into an elbow joint. Okay. So, you know, I, I felt like I needed. I mean, this thing, if even after the cortisone shot, it took like a, a good solid week to start feeling good again. But once I stopped doing that Repatha, once I had my cortisone shot and I got rid of the Repatha, the elbow feels great, feels fine. So I, I know, I know it's from the Repatha, no doubt in my mind. Mm. So you come in contact with more physicians than I do. What is their opinion on Repatha? Because I, I've talked to, you know, online to a few doctors here and there on social media, some cardiologists, and they are maintaining that Repatha is completely safe and they're not aware of any of these muscle pains and weird symptoms people are reporting. What did your cardiologist My say? My cardiologist cares about cholesterol. <laughs> they don't care how they get it down. And, then, you know, you know what? Um, I can only go by what I saw with you when we spoke, what I read on what I read online from other people that are taking it. I don't care what the cardiologists say. If they're not on it, they're just promoting a drug that they're given, you know, the, the you know, inf information on. And it's something, listen, this is big, big business, Joe, as Crestor and all of these statins is big business. It seems like everybody's on a statin. Everybody over the age of 50 is on a statin. I mean, whether you belong on it or not, I don't know. I don't think so. But but I will say it's it's like candy. I remember one cardiologist said to me, "Oh, come on, you take a take 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 the take the take the Crest or it's like it's like nothing. It's a pill a day. You take a small dose, and you know it'll help you out." And I fought it so hard, but the diet wasn't enough, so I gave in. I said, "You know what?" As long as I'm not having muscle aches. And here's the thing, Joe, if I ever did start developing any kind of muscle aches with the oral statin, because it's not an injectable, it will leave my body quick. That'll be out of my body with, you know, within, within a week or two, it's completely gone once I stop. So that's what they recommend. A lot of patients that got to go on these lipid medications, these statins, and I'm not promoting statins. I don't want to be on a statin, trust me. 
and I probably don't need to be on a statin. I, I know I don't need to be on a statin by my numbers, but because I am a stent patient, they want me as low as possible. And if I'm not having any side effects, I gotta take it. <laughs> it's because of the inflammation. And that's a whole, that's another thing that I saw someone mention. It, it really, the, L, the LDL or cholesterol, my problem is really inflammation. They want my arteries uh, not to have any inflammation. And uh, we, that's all, uh, we're gonna go down a whole other discussion on that. But yeah, it, 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 they're all, it's all interconnected. Um, have you had your CRP level measured? Your C-reactive I protein? did, I think, and here's the thing. It's usually on the higher side because of me, and it's, I'll tell you why, because of my marathon running and my training. I'm not your average Joe out there. If I'm doing, you know, eight to 10 miles a day out there on the roads and pushing my body and I'm always dehydrated. Um, and that's a problem I have because of that. I, I, I have gout issues, uh, which I've had for 30 years that I once in a while I get a gout attack, but that is my, my gout is related being that I'm always dehydrated and my doctor is saying, drink, 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 and drink. And I'm just a camel. I, I don't like drinking. <laughs> it's like, but that's a person. And I'm trying, I'm doing my best. I, I, I but in the winter time, it's not as common. I, I, even though I'm training now, um, I'm not as dehydrated in the summertime. I'll go out on an 80 degree day and I'm out and banging out eight miles. I lose five pounds and it's all water. Yeah, exercise, yeah, obviously is usually pretty good for lowering inflammation, but, you know, there's always going to be that U-shaped curve. A little bit of something's good. An awful lot of something actually could actually raise uh, inflammation. So that does, that does make some sense. Um, I get that. Um, so this, this has really been interesting. Um, I, I, do you have any, um, anything else you want to say to people who are taking Repatha or maybe physicians who are watching us right now because they've heard their patients say they got these muscle pains and they have never heard of this before. Do you, do you have any closing thoughts or words of wisdom? No, I, I, you know what? Um, yes, I do. And here's the bottom line. Medication if you need to be on medication and your doctor says you should be on it, do your homework, do your research uh, before you do anything. Number one, that's the most important thing. Number two, with, 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 on a personal level, from what I'm hearing from other clients, how I found you, some of your clients who complained about this, it's very individual. Some people say it's the greatest drug in the world, okay? Some people could take statins and high dose statins and say, oh, I don't know, I've had a muscle ache in my life. Some people take it one time and they start getting pain and develop. I will say this. I think the physicians are doing their job. They get a rep come in. They, the reps are, uh, they, they, they get trained within in, in two weeks of taking a course and then they go out to all the doctors and they, they promote a drug. They're not doctors, these reps, most of them. Some maybe are to some extent, but they, 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 they're selling a product. They're out there trying to push a drug. And whether it's Repatha, there's another drug like Repatha out there. Let's not get into it. It's another injectable, um, some people, but they're very similar. You, you know, what? this is big business drugs. It is any drug. Okay, so, you know, that's the world, sadly. It's all about making money and pushing but I, I, I think cardiologists should start listening to their patients more. And, and, and obviously, there's no doubt in my mind, Joe, Repatha does cause problems um, with, with certain individuals. And I think it's a lot more out there because it's such a powerful, powerful drug. Man, if you're going to have to take this every two weeks versus take a pill every day, Okay, and it's it's stronger. I mean, I've heard numbers that people take two shots and they drop a hundred points in, on their LDLs like in, in nothing, in nothing within a couple, two or three shots. So then we're talking about a major, major powerful drug that seems to do its job for the right patient. Usually people on Repatha Joe um, are people that really have super high cholesterol. They're taking a statin as well, and it's not helping. And that's where the person who said uh, to me, oh, your cardiologist is crazy. He was 
I, I, I fed into it. He, he wanted to try something because I wasn't taking anything. And he said, if you, you know, maybe we'll try this. He was maybe a little uninformed and, and, and I'm glad I would, I'm the informed person mm-hmm. and we stopped it and, you know, we're doing okay. So people, everybody's different. Every cardiologist is different. Every internist is different. But remember, if you feel something, tell your doctor, okay? Just don't keep taking it. and Because there are alternatives out there. There are. And, and you know, we're not bashing Repatha here. There are some people, I'm sure most people don't have any side effects whatsoever. And you mentioned the other drug, which I can't remember its name. I can't even pronounce its name. It begins with the letter P. Uh, and some people have told me I, I got off Repatha and I took that other medication and all my side effects went away. So it's, it's very strange how some people will have debilitating muscle pain. Uh, I remember one physician who told me he thought he was going to have to retire. The pain was so bad. Yeah, baby, tell me that. It, it is. Um, I felt so bad it, for him. The, bo- the bottom, you know, Joe, here's the bottom line. Um, and, and, and sadly, I have to wrap this up. But because yeah, yeah. I, I, I have some another appointment coming up. But I will say this. This is a medication that's not for everybody. It's all medications. Sure. And just be prudent, people. Talk to you. Do your homework. Do your research. And if you feel that there's something that doesn't seem right, tell your doctor. And, 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 and just, don't, just don't believe everything you hear. It's, 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 it's really the cardinal rule in, in everything in life, okay? Be aware, you know, you know be skeptical to some extent on things, but um, these drugs are made to help people for the right individual. And you're right, we're not knocking our path here, Joe, but, but uh, um, I'm thrilled I'm off it. Yeah. I have found my happy medium. And ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be fine. Uh, it, 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 just, 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 you know, talk to your doctor if you have any concerns. Robert, really appreciate your time and your patience with all of my questions and the questions everybody has asked. And uh, continued success and good luck with the marathons. Joe, I would like to do Another follow-up, maybe on another topic, if you, uh, other things, um, we, we could talk yeah. about that off the air, but uh, I really enjoy this. I think it, 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 being a physician, talking to a, a, someone who's a professional as well, who understands all of this, I'll leave you with this. I can't thank you enough. I'm so glad I reached out to you and you were always very positive and said to me, this friend of yours, he stopped it and you kept telling me it's going to go away. It's going to go away. Trust me, it's going to. And it did. It did. So people, if you're having any concerns and you haven't been on it that long, or even if you have been on it for a long time and you're not happy, talk to your doctor, come up with an alternative. There's life after a path or if it's not for you. That's what I'm going to call this uh, video and podcast, Life After a Path. <laughs> Robert, thank you much for your, 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 your kind uh, time today. And uh, again, can't thank you enough. Thank you, sir. And we'll, 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 we'll definitely do something again. Take care now.